What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today we're back with another Destiny 2 video and a whole bunch of stuff to talk about with everything that's just happened yesterday and today. There's a confusing situation with a secret that cannot be cracked as well as multiple new exotics, the Radiant slot as well as quest lines and even riddles. I've also got a couple of important warnings for you guys. A lot of people have accidentally been locking themselves out of quest lines and loot so I want to let you guys know about that. So definitely been a couple of weird days. Some people are happy, others not so happy. Of course, we're going to be rounding up and discussing everything in this one video. Feel free to the like button down below if you want to support the channel and let's jump into it. So let's talk about some exotic stuff beginning with the mystery box which of course we've been looking at in our inventory for like over a month now but finally it is now available to be fully unlocked if you can see what's inside which leads to something else which leads to an exotic. Like I said there are quite a few pitfalls and mistakes you can quite easily make in this quest that could mess you up and have you waiting for a week or have you waiting some RNG or just really make your day a lot more difficult so a lot of tips in here I want to make sure you guys do to make sure you're not wasting time. So once you've got the first three keys from the first three forges, Ada is going to offer you the mold for the fourth key. Now, this thing, firstly, make sure you get this on your right character. So if you're smart, and if you have a rare bounty saved, then get the key mold on that character. It has to be the same one. It seems right now you can't get this mold to drop or be given to you on other characters. If you don't have the rare bounty or if you don't know what I'm talking about, then don't worry, I'll explain it in a second. But essentially, to get the fourth key, you're going to need to do firstly the Leviathan and enter the code to go kill a bunch of Watchers. You can just farm the same ones over and over again. Just make sure you're kind of close to it so the Watcher does drop the item for you. But after that, you're going to do a bunch of strikes. I would suggest doing one of the fast nightfalls like Zol or Lake of Shadows with the helping modifiers because score doesn't matter. But that's going to be the fastest way. It's still going to take you probably an hour or so. It's just a very long grind. So after that, you just need to kill the two drones in the new forge and this chest is going to give you the fourth key. Now, the next part is where things get pretty weird. A lot of RNG and time gates are going to come into this. The first part of this next section is going to be get a rare bounty I was talking about. So these, if you don't know, do have a small chance to drop. I mean, a very small chance when you complete the normal Ada bounty. So it's just kind of an RNG thing. Have to hope you get lucky. Unfortunately, this is required for the quest step. So it's a case of doing the bounties every day. I mean, you can probably think for yourself how many times you've seen this bounty to get an idea of how rare this is. So as a tip, I would suggest actually not beginning this entire quest line with Ada, not getting the fourth key mold from her unless you have the rare bounty. Because once you grab it, you can't choose what character. But I think until then, you can just grind every bounty on every character every day and once you get that special rare bounties drop pick that character and finish the quest with them otherwise if you begin the quest on a character you have to get a rare bounty on only that character so it kind of limits you in terms of rng so after that once you obtain complete and then turn in the bounty is going to do the next step and this is where you have to complete one more shattered throne now the slight problem is that, of course shattered throne is only available one out of the three weeks so definitely not a good combination with the thing i just talked about being an rng based bounty you have to do that this week and get it otherwise you're waiting quite a while to do this quest line the good news is that after this step you're nearly done so you have to do a special version of the Pyramidian Nightfall Strike and then a quest line that ends up in the European Dead Zone and has you facing against Civix himself and after that you're going to get given the Izanagi's Burden a Sniper Rifle as an exotic primary weapon so this thing is very very cool. Jumping into what it does and some initial impressions, this is some gameplay from my friend Jack who got the weapon. I don't have the rare bounty yet so I'm stuck waiting for my hunter to get that drop but earlier on we were doing some testing and messing around with the sniper for quite a while. What it does is basically let you choose to fire all four bullets into one super bullet and it is pretty much exactly as it sounds so you better hope you don't miss but it is going to be of course very very efficient if you need some fast burst damage. I think it definitely deserves being in the same conversation as the big heavy hitters, so the Whisper, the Sleeper, the Spindle, the Thunderlord, those kind of weapons. Obviously it's tough to compare with power weapons because they should of course do more damage as heavies, but from what I've seen and heard in testing, it seems that one Super 4 bullet from this thing does 50% more damage than a Whispered Breathing Shot from the Whisper of the Worm Sniper. So again, obviously it's a power weapon, but does 50% more in one bullet. It's basically a situational thing. Of course, if you have a big boss with a big crit spot that doesn't move much and gives you a full minute to shoot at him, then of course, Whisper the Worm is always going to be the undisputed king. But if you've got a major that pops up with quite a lot of health, you can just snipe him with one bullet and do a lot more damage than you could do with pretty much anything else. So I think for a lot more situations inside PvE, this thing is going to be more useful than the spindle, which is only really good against big, slow-moving bosses where you have a lot of time to shoot them. 
I think the best way to think of this gun is probably as a long range of sniper version of the EP shotgun. I mean, there are a lot of enemies where it's not the best idea to go and stab them in the face and then try and shotgun them. So it's definitely a lot safer. The only issue is that, of course, is exotics. That does mean you can't use the spindle or the thousand voices or Thunderlord, anything like that. You have to use something like the avalanche or the hammerhead, which is a good combo. You could use that or a rocket launcher and then use the energy weapon as a primary. As far as Crucible, it does act pretty much as you would expect it, so the 4 damage bullet is going to kill one shot supers to the head, and it can body shot any non supers basically anywhere anytime, so there's a ton of damage. The 3 bullet version is actually not capable of the one shot body shot, so here I even had one resilience and it still couldn't one shot me, so you do need the 4 bullets to basically do anything effective, but of course as well as that, you need ammo, which is kind of hard to come by in Crucible when you get 2 at a time. So that is the Izanagi's burden, how you get it, some pitfalls to avoid during the quest line, and how it actually functions. Of course, let me know down below how many of you guys have got it and what do you think of it so far. Moving on, I wanted to talk about the new Radiant slot on certain weapons. We finally found out what it actually does, and it's a pretty cool mechanic, but it's quite strange. During, I think, my third or fourth completion of this forge, I managed to pick up this thing, which is called the Obsidian Accelerator. And this thing is very odd. So what you can do with this thing is either two choices. You can firstly trade it to Ada for something that looks pretty much identical. It does have the same icon, but it's a different item. But this thing is actually called the Obsidian Radiance. Now, this is what you plug into the Radiance slot, which we'll talk about in a second. But the other option is actually use this thing on the spot. So as it turns out, actually using this is going to do nothing. It doesn't give you anything that we know of so far. And at this current point in time, it does nothing of benefit. So right now, I wouldn't suggest using it. I do think it will probably have some kind of feature that will be discovered at some point. I mean, they deliberately made a second item that has no function other than should be traded for an identical item. So I do think it's probably got some kind of function. What it is right now, we just don't know. So if you trade it to Ada and get the Radiance, you can then plug this into certain Black Army weapons, including those from the Forge and of course those from the Raid as well, which can be quite helpful. But what it does is give you bonus damage inside the Forges. It does, of course, also give it that Forge glowing effect, which is pretty cool. But what it feels like from my personal experience of using weapons, I put it on the Blast Furnace here, it does feel like probably one Rampage stack, maybe two. Nothing crazy, but definitely a nice little damage boost over nothing. The way I see this is pretty much the same thing as the Leviathan exclusive perks which you put on the raid weapons. Those only worked on the Leviathan. But this is basically that, except for taking up your mod slot, it's its own separate thing, which is pretty nice. But at the same time, again, it does have the problem that it's not going to be useful anywhere outside forges. I think the forges themselves are slowly going to become a little bit more irrelevant over time as the main loot is already out by now. It's just a case of getting those perfect god rolls that you want. Once you get them, you're probably not going to go into the forges that often. It basically means this buff is going to become relevant as well, which is kind of a shame. As a lot of people have been pointing out, this definitely would have been a lot more helpful back a month ago when we actually grind the forges, and especially when they were above our light level. Like, imagine during day one, having a weapon with this intrinsic perk would be much better than any other choice. It would be an incentive to use it. I think the utility of Radiance is probably going to come down to how much and how often you actually play forges. If you don't, it's probably not going to matter that much to you. Otherwise, it's always nice to have a little buff. I mean, in my opinion, I think the Radiance buff could honestly be applied to the rest of PvE. I don't think anything would be broken because of that. It's only a small amount of weapons, and it would be definitely a good incentive to do all the forges and grind for this very, very long quest line and try and get the item. But either way, that is what Radiance does. It gives your weapon a glow and makes it do a bit more damage inside of forges. Let me know what you guys think of it. So moving on to the next topic, which is the Jotun Exotic Fusion Rifle slash Grenade Launcher Fireball Tracking Thing. It's a very weird gun, but this is actually now dropping in the game. I guess it was time-gated till the fourth forge being unlocked, which we'll talk about in a second, but it's actually the same function as the Le Monarch bow. So any completion of a powerful frame has a chance to drop this alongside it after you complete any of the four forges in the game right now. Do let me know down below in the comments or tweet me if you guys have this weapon. More importantly, what you think of it so far. I've seen a lot of people say they quite like it inside Crucible, but now that makes, I guess, all three of the main Black Army exotics are dropping in the game. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the Niobe Labs, which has been definitely a very controversial thing in the past couple of days. You may have seen it, you may have not. Essentially, Niobe Labs is basically this puzzle mini activity thing, which was supposed to be the precursor to unlock the actual fourth forge, the exact same way that the first Last Wish team to beat that raid activated the curse cycle in the city. This is a similar fashion. So the first team to beat this puzzle and solve it, which was very, very complicated, should have unlocked the forge. As it turns out, I guess the puzzle was a bit too hard or just super weird that nobody could think of it, but right now it's still unsolved at this current point. And then what happened was Bungie set it live anyway, the forge, to go live at 2pm Pacific yesterday. That is why it went up. So it's still unsolved right now, and Bungie, I guess, thought we took too long to solve it. It's definitely not the situation we would expect or are used to with this game having something that is too complicated or too difficult, but it's a very weird situation. I think after the first like 12 hours of it not being beaten, Bungie were kind of in a lose-lose situation. Whatever they do is going to anger a lot of people. 
Of course, if you do nothing, then people get even more mad. The new forge they paid for over a month ago is not open yet. They can't play it. But if they just end up giving us the forge, it kind of invalidates, especially the people trying to solve the puzzle because they did a lot of work kind of for nothing. So it's a very weird situation. Either way, people are going to be very unhappy, whatever they do. I think as far as Black Armory goes, the secrets are obviously a good thing as what we've asked for, but they seem to be getting in the way of the actual content these days as opposed to being a cool added bonus on the side of the content. The first three forges were locked behind very long and very tedious quest steps, but now the fourth forge is locked behind a puzzle the community couldn't solve in a whole day. So you can see the problem. I mean, obviously this is Bungie trying to experiment and trying to come up with new kind of weird stuff for us to do, which I guess is good in concept. Obviously it didn't work out perfectly, but it is them trying to do new stuff. And I would imagine the feedback for this is going to go into something like Penumbra, which is supposed to be very secret and of course raid heavy. So we'll see how that changes. But right now, I don't think I can fully form an opinion until I see how this seventh puzzle was actually unlocked in the Obi Labs, because it could be something really hard or it could just be something really weird and simple, but kind of unexpected. Of course, I'll let you guys know when it is actually unlocked. And in the meantime, I want to know from you guys, what do you think of the situation? Do you not care in the slightest? Or are you kind of annoyed by it and you wish it was unlocked earlier? What do you think Bungie should have done? But that's going to do it for today's video. As always, if you enjoyed it, a like rating down below is much appreciated. Of course, if you want to be the first to watch my new videos and you can subscribe with notifications turned on, my Instagram and Twitter link down below in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one.